what she owed you. The enemy came up against your name. The enemy came up against your character. You will win. Win. You will win. Enemy came up against your health. The enemy came up against your finances. The enemy came up against your vision. The enemy came up against your business. You will win. Oh, you will win. Yes, you will. We're going to do that again. Good evening. Good, good. good evening. Everyone. I just like totally ran everyone and evening together. Good evening, everyone. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hey. And welcome to Talk About It Tuesday. Ah, how's everyone doing? How y'all doing tonight? How y'all? Hi, y'all. 
All welcome, right. welcome, welcome. Um, if you are joining us, please place the city and the state that you are joining from in the comments. Yes. Um, we would love to um, see where you are joining from. We always just get very, very excited to see where God's audience. Yes. God's is, kids. Yeah. We're Kingdom's kids mm -hmm. are joining from. Um, and then also, if you are joining from the YouTube channel, please hit like, share, and subscribe, you guys, to our YouTube channel. Please and thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because we are really um, eventually going to be pivoting to that space. Only. Only. Yes. So get it while you can um, on Facebook. Um, we have shared to our Facebook groups. Thank you so much for those of you who are joining us from the Anchored Women page. Hey, ladies. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much to our first lady, Lady yes, Eve, for always just you. being so supportive um, mm -hmm. of our ministry. Yes. Um, we, we just are so thankful to our church, mm -hmm. um, a live church, and to our, um, not only our first lady, but to our pastor. He is so supportive of us. Um, and so praise God. Yes. Yes. So um, we are soaring and we are on here. We'll talk about it Tuesday. Those of you that are not familiar, um, we help individuals who have experienced loss or trauma discover their personal love story through self-care. So we are just so appreciative. We're so humbled when you choose to join us in this space um, we just have fun. We do. We really do have we fun. Really do. Um, <laughs> and it's so amazing that we have just been doing segment after segment after segment in this space. And um, self-care truly is um, health care. Mm -hmm. There is a direct correlation between um, physical health and spiritual growth, you guys. And so we get on here. We share very candidly about our, our testimonies. And um, we just get real. That's it. That's what we do. That's all we know how to do. That's all we know how to do. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to go ahead and just open up in prayer. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get started. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the day that you have made, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. Father God, I just want to ask you to just come and take over, Father God. Just go before us, Father God, and 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 just make any crooked link straight, Father God. Father God, I ask that you touch each and every last individual's heart that sees this life, Father God. I ask that you remove Amber and I from from the from the viewers ears and and eyes and let them see you father god father god i ask that you bless that person that's suffering i ask father god that you comfort that person that is living with loss right now father god i ask you father god that you heal that person's emotions that is dealing with trauma and, and triggering events, Father God. Father God, we know you can do it. We are living examples. So we want to see and hear how you have blessed others as well. So go before us and just take care of all those folks. And those who come in later, whether it be later tonight or years from now, Father God, let them receive the blessings of your word as well, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we have been coming um, live for these different segments for um, regarding environmental self-care. Mm -hmm. And last week we covered decluttering your environment. And the two environments that we specifically talked about were the work environment and the home or residential environment mm -hmm. um, last week. And so we shared very candidly yeah. about our work and home environments and those places and spaces in our lives and the some of the differences in um, my sister and myself. And so this week we will be diving into maintaining a clean and safe environment. Yeah. So last, last week we um, kind of tackled some things regarding um, emotional mm -hmm. things related to the environment, how our environments speak volumes, mm -hmm. right, about um, our health care. Yes. Okay. And that's that's really, really huge. Yes. So we're going to really, um, we, we never want to leave you with something um, and have you just be really perplexed in that situation. Like, well, what am I supposed to do with that information? Mm -hmm. So this week we're coming to you and it's almost like it's kind of like part two. I think so. Like it a feels follow -up. like. 
Part two, for sure. Right. Um, and so this week, it's about maintaining um, those environments. And we're going to give you some tips as we dig into that. And then once again, we are also going to give you some personal experience, if you will. And so I always kind of do this kind of sneak attack with this, where as we're preparing, um, then we're going to we're going to answer some questions and we're going to bring some personal relatable experience. But I never tell her exactly what we're going to be talking about. She never tells me. Right. So it's going to be revealed um, as things unfold. <laughs> so before we get started, sis, um, do you want to just tell our audience, kind of um, give them a formal introduction regarding like your niche? Yes. Okay. So my name is LaShawn Gunnels. I am a Reconnection Life Coach. I help those who are living with the, with the loss of a loved one, loss of a job, a relationship or a situation, grow through their grief and reconnect to their happiness with passion and on purpose. Because you can, it can be done. Trust me, I'm a living witness. And I, so I do that in addition to working with this fabulous woman right here. So let's just tell everyone what you do in your niche. So I help individuals who have experienced um, trauma at the hands of a parent. So my specific niche is individual who have experienced um, mainly sexual trauma, but any type of trauma that is related to that of a parent or in the space that kind of surrounds that um, is typically where my clients come from that space um, and who no longer desire to live in pieces, but begin a journey of peace. And so typically God opens um, doors and allows um, individuals that are my clients to come and cross my path and they have relatable experience in environments. So it's an environment that maybe domestic violence has happened in, a, um, in that environment. Sexual trauma has um, either happened to them or in or around them. Um, and then my prophetic, my prophetic gifting also unfolds in that space as well. Yeah. Um, and we are both certified life coaches yes, in that yeah. space. So, okay, so as we get started, um, we talked a little bit last week about the way our environment um, looks can be an indication of things that are going on in our lives. And so some of the examples that we gave were kind of like excessive things, mm -hmm. um, items, things such as items being in one space. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we talked about that. The other thing is um, clutter is a, is a big thing. People think about like the show Hoarders. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when, when you think about things, but I also gave kind of the opposite response, which is you can walk into a space and it can be excessively clean, mm -hmm. right? Um, oftentimes when you have experienced trauma and there's a loss of control, um, then you can go to a place of obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So people are like, oh, wow, I never thought about it from that standpoint, mm -hmm. right? So um, yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing is disorganization. When you look at places and spaces where it seems like not only are things being collected or and or stockpiled, so that can mean like, many items or one specific item being collected or stored. So for example, papers, okay? That's something that can be very um, familiar in a workspace. Yes, scared right? to throw away any and everything, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right, people are like, well, I might need it, mm -hmm. right? Have you heard of things like that? Yeah, that's actually my biggest one. And then, but we get to the tips later, right? Right. We'll get okay. to the tips later. So yeah, paper. So <laughs> accessibly collecting paper. Is, yeah. Um, something, um, you know, my, my actual professional degree is that I'm a gerontologist and that is working with individuals who are um, older adults mm -hmm. and then aging. Um, and so something that also is, um, can be in this space is collecting food. Mm -hmm. So maybe for example, the grocery store has an ad and there are canned items, cans of corn, cans of green beans, cans of peas, 
and they're like four cans for five dollars they'll go buy the flats mm -hmm. individuals will go buy the flats of that you're one single individual person but maybe you have just stacks and stacks and stacks of canned goods that no one individual can consume um, in one lifetime or one mm -hmm. week or one month or a time frame. Yeah. So things of that nature, exactly. right? Um, individuals who maybe um, shop, compulsive shopping mm -hmm. is something as well. Collecting maybe um, Hanes or Fruit of the Loom t-shirts go on sale <laughs> and you have packages and packages and packages so volume mm -hmm. that's a big deal it is yeah. it is and yeah and i know for a fact the especially the food mm -hmm. example you gave is in, in your um career you know being a gerontologist, gerontologist. Mm -hmm. um our our seasoned uh, adults do a lot of that food collecting due to the fact they're triggered from the depression. Absolutely. The great yeah. depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just, um, if you've ever, um, experienced any time in your life when you've been food deprived, it's that part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's or if you've been deprived of having clothing, mm -hmm. um, then people will stop pile clothing. You know, you're like, why do you need for, you know, shirts that are the same They're color the same. <laughs> right you're like that's the same shirt and the person's mm -hmm. like but i need it mm -hmm. well if you've ever gone without a shirt in your lifetime okay. if you've ever gone without any type of clothing you know why do you need like four packages of socks mm -hmm. you can only wear one pair at the same time well go without socks go without shoes mm -hmm. go without food right yeah. people who stop call their freezers mm -hmm. you're you know they'll have freezer burn food but they, the comfort is in opening up the freezer and seeing the food, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is um, nothing hanging on the walls. I mentioned that. You did. Yeah, I mentioned. <laughs> and people are like, what does that have to do with anything? Well, in my experience of pain and trauma, um, I had my precious items and belongings destroyed to specifically cause me um, maliciously done to cause me pain. Yeah. And so my brain to protect itself was like, well, I don't need to hang things on the wall. Mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes when you walk into an environment, you're like, this is really the cleanest place that I've ever seen in my life. Like in my home, there's one thing hanging on a surface in my home and it's a sticky note to remind me to buy a supplement. That's it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, I mean, my home is, you know, clean, but I have to be watched. And I mentioned that because it's a, it's a trigger. And we're going to talk about that later. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's indicative of something else. Yeah. Right. And the other thing is having items on every single surface. Yeah. Right. It's like you're hiding, you know, absolutely. Like, what are you trying to hide and, and why, and really visit that space. Yeah. It's something about something else. Yeah. It's absolutely. screaming something about something else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So a room that has an echo can be screaming something about something else. Exactly. Yeah. So true. And a room full of stuff can be sending a message that screams volumes about something else. Yep. Right. So true. Okay. So um, we gave personal examples about that. So now we're going to talk about the tips, right? Um, to maintaining a clean and safe environment because um, we titled this um, environmental M E N T A L because those are all mental things because mm -hmm. when you've experienced trauma, it goes to a mental space. It does. The emotional stuff goes to a mental space that goes here. Mm -hmm. It does. Right. Can consume you. Absolutely. Yeah. It does. It has the capacity to consume you, mm -hmm. which a lot of individuals, if you have ever watched the show Hoarders, um, they will literally pack things into a space and then they're in this tiny, confined, isolated space, not just here, but it's literally mm -hmm. physically has caused them to be isolated and just cut off from the world. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. And so even in a space where you can kind of hear the echo in my home, right. I really have to really take every thought captive about, okay, it's time to decorate. So now that I'm in my new space, I'm like, I have um, something that's sitting here on my desk 
that I'm excited and looking forward to decorating, putting items and things in my space. Yes. Right. The healthy approach to things and stuff. Okay. So tips to maintain a clean and safe environment um, is making your bed daily. Right. Okay. So I know that sounds crazy and everybody's like, what the what? Right. Um, so in my coaching model called the first 15 mm -hmm. is that when you just wake up, you're journaling, you're meditating, um, listening to music in that space, um, having time aside with Holy Spirit, with God, with Jesus, having that time, but also you make up your bed because just starting somewhere sounds very simple, mm -hmm. but it typically takes about 28 to 30 days to create and form a new healthy habit. Okay. So when we are maintaining a clean and safe environment, it sounds like we're just doing something that sounds kind of crazy, but if you can get up and you can make up your bed and you can do that for 28 to 30 days, you can do something else, right? So if you stop and you think about this, I'm going to get up and I'm going to make up my bed. I could pick up and clean up something around in that small area around the bed. Just start somewhere. I like it. Because most people have like a bedside table, mm -hmm. somewhere that you either sit a drink or a, a clock is sitting there, a lamp mm -hmm. or something. And most people, it tends to be a dumping ground for things. There's usually, there's <laughs> typically most people that are like, oh, yeah, and I'm not judging. I'm not pointing anybody out that's over there, 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 or anything like that, right? <laughs> So it's a place to start, right? Right. So if you get out of the bed, because most people get out of some type of place where they spend time resting, mm -hmm. you swing your feet to the side of it, you sit up in some way, shape, form, you roll over, hit the ground in some way, <laughs> make that bed up, but reach down and pick up the trash, the garbage, the cup, the spoon, the plate, because I know I've lived with teenagers, right? <laughs> Lord, I've lived teenagers, right? Young adults. Um, pick those things up. Pick up the sock, the shoe, the undergarments, mm -hmm. and move them to their intended location. Just start somewhere. That's true. That's so good. Thanks, coach. <laughs> but you actually have literally accomplished getting yourself up. Mm-hmm. In your first 15, mm -hmm. the mindset, because in my coaching model, there's three core components, mindset, order, and action. Yep. So the mindset is, I know I can do it. Positive. Yep. You literally are still sitting in your bed if you want to. That's true. And you just lean over. Right? You just lean, lean over. Lean over, grabbing something. So that's order. You're ordering your steps, which is, in my coaching model, utilizing your time well. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you're being action oriented. Faith with that works is dead. And if you really need it, you can reach out to a lifeline or a checkmate. Yeah. Because of mine, checkmate is those those faith filled friends that are gonna like check you and love and go, girl, you can pick girl, I know what's by your bed. <laughs> like, get it. Right. Put it in the up. trash, right. put it in the laundry or just kick it across the room. Like, I mean, some of these things are like, yeah, I just girl, I kicked it as I got up because some things really are actually a safety hazard. If something, you know, I know at my age falls are bad. Yes, they are. Right. And so some of the things that are in and around the spaces where we literally sleep are a hazard. Mm -hmm. Right. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So what are you thinking about? that? I just think you just totally coached me. To success. To success. Absolutely. Never to failure, but always to success. <laughs> um, on some things that I need to do in my room. So if you guys listened or tuned in to last week's segment, my bedroom is the issue in my environment. Um, there's lots of work that needs to be done. And I just need to start somewhere and like the whole making. Okay. So I have a question. Making up the bed is definitely something. I leave before the hubs. Mm-hmm. How do I, what do I do? Just make up my side of the bed? Yeah. I mean, I would like, so I have coached other people in like just starting somewhere is like, just start smooth out your section of the bed. You know, even if it's something very, very simple like that. Okay. Or one of the other things that I did was um, I coached a, another married woman in this space mm -hmm. of 
um, just folding your pajamas. And, and then she lays them like under her pillow. Ooh. And so, because she is the same way, like when my husband's still in the bed because they work opposite shifts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's a place to start as well. And then you move towards it. So then now it's like, well, on the weekends, we're actually both out of bed at the same time. And so there's a couple of days of the week where they're actually shared in that space and they kind of get to giggling and stuff. Cause he's like, what do you do with these decorative pillow things mm -hmm. kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. And so they got to a, pace, a space where they're making the bed together That's okay. and it's kind of a fun thing mm -hmm. and stuff. And so now they're both putting pillow, you know, putting their pajamas under the pillow and stuff. Um, and they're both making up the bed at least two days out of the week. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Because she would actually prefer that the bed be made um, every single day. But sometimes when, you're in relationship in the now in that marital space it's shifts are opposite sleep patterns and habits are opposite exactly. so just start somewhere okay yeah that's good yeah i think <clears throat> everything that you mentioned makes sense well it's very doable and it's very doable and like you said especially the spaces around the bed you know we're at these ages where, you know, our sleep gets interrupted by the bladder. Mm -hmm. And I caught myself tripping over shoes just the other night. So, yeah, you're totally speaking. You're all in my Kool-Aid. <laughs> well, so <laughs> one of the other things, too, that um, that I mentioned last week was the Rubbermaid totes. So the Rubbermaid totes, and you can actually place those because last week that was one of the tips mm -hmm. was that you already in this space should have them next to your bed or if not this is another tip that i will mention go get the rubbermaid totes you can label them you know do away with it keep it or thinking about it right and it can be right next to you so you can go you know what i i really know for a fact that there's things next to my bed that i'm like it's a get rid of situation mm -hmm. or it's a keep it situation and so you can put them right there it's a toss and go, mm -hmm. yes, you know, shoes, shoes are oftentimes, especially for women are seasonal. Yeah. A Rubbermaid tote is an amazing opportunity for the thigh high boots and the heels and the sandals. Um, they're when you toss them, when the totes full, it's an opportunity for the hubby to put it on a shelf or the grandkids or the cousins or the helpers mm -hmm. to, to put it in the storage or put it in the basement or put it in the wherever that it's really intended to go. Exactly. Right. So it's a wonderful opportunity. Toss it because when you find the match, you're like, well, where's the other one? Right. Mm -hmm. Then you throw them both in there and you keep going. But every single morning, five days out of the week is an opportunity to use a natural occurring time mm -hmm. to really clear as you go. You're not doing something that you're not already doing exactly right you've got to get out of bed and go to work most of us still we're still doing those investor jobs mm -hmm. utilize that space utilize that natural occurring time to really there you go exactly and you're maintaining that space the other thing too is that environmental m-e-n-t-a-l it makes you feel good it does because when you walk into a space and you look you get overwhelmed about being overwhelmed however when you look and you're like, man, this looks great. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, it wasn't any additional time. It wasn't any additional anything other than you going, man, I cleared this whole space out. And I guarantee you in the course of a week, you'll be very, very proud of yourself. I'm okay? excited to start. All right. So <laughs> my next thing was define clean for you and then create a realistic, no pressure plan from there to grow from. Okay, because everybody's definition of clean is different, right? Because I guarantee you with this plan and the reason why I introduced that first before defining clean is people are like, get the freak out of here with that. People don't believe it until I describe it because it really does work, right? Because I'm telling you, I'm the clean queen. Like when it comes to creating a plan and it really does work and it's fast, when I tell you it is so fast, like I can walk into a room that people think is a hoarder's room and they're like, how did you do that? I've been trying to clean that room for a month. And how did you do it in like three hours? And I'm like, my brain, I'm a strategic planner. Right. And I can just see it and go, well, because 
it's the way that my brain works, but it's how you're approaching the situation. Yeah. You're approaching it as the mountain instead of approaching it like it's the climb, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. People try to eat a meatloaf sandwich like this instead of just taking it one bite at a time, mm -hmm. right? So defining clean, don't compare yourself. Don't be going, but I thought, it, mm, no, because I guarantee you at the end of a week, you'd be like, my room is clean. Because before you looked at it, you were like, this is a hot mess. Right. <laughs> but at the end of the week, your definition of clean is like, this is much cleaner than it was before. Right? Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So that's the reason why I was like, define clean and then have a realistic plan for moving forward mm -hmm. and growing from there. Yeah. Okay. I love it. So, sis, mm -hmm. how do you now define clean? I define clean as just make it a move. Start in the corner and just get the bins and start putting things in there. There you go. See? I'm excited <laughs> to get started. <laughs> yes, because so many people are defeated in their minds before you ever literally like are in the space mm -hmm. because before you were like, I'm never ever going to let you in here because it's crazy. But now you could literally get into that space by yourself yeah. and go, this, this is doable. It is. It really totally I is mean, doable. just to be able to see it, just sitting here having a conversation and be able to see what that progress is really mm -hmm. going to look like. That's exciting. I never was able to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So when I get into that space, it's already a done deal because mm -hmm. I've never allowed myself or been able to visualize it getting done. That's it. And starting in those corners. And, you know, um, there was a, a thing I used to follow way back in the day. She was called the fly lady. And what she said, and I think you've told me this as well, set your timer. Do 10 minute segments, five mm -hmm. minute segments, whatever it is that won't totally exert, ex exert, exert, exert or exhaust, you, or exhaust mm -hmm. you. And just, and then you set your timer again for 10 minutes so that you mm -hmm. take a fiver yes. or a break from it. Yeah. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to get started. I want to hear, as you come on here, I want to hear who else is like me and is ready to make those moves. So, whether you're live with us now or you come in later, let let me know because I would love to, for us to go on this journey together. Yeah, that would yeah. be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. What else you got? Okay, so <laughs> next. Okay, so when doing an environmental assessment, one of the major things too, and this kind of goes back to me being, um, you know, a specialist in aging as well, and you know, moving along the aging continuum is um, environments need to be healthy and safe. Okay. So we, we kind of joke about things, but really, as you were talking about it, like we do wake up, we have those natural body bodily functions that happen in the middle of the night. Um, and most of the time, most people feel safe and comfortable in your own, especially home environments to where when you get up in the middle of the night, you don't turn on a light. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and oftentimes falls for just adults and individuals period. It doesn't even have to be older adults. Um, they happen in the middle of the night when people get up to go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's because people don't turn on lights, but falls occur and it's over. It's people stumbling over their own belongings. Mm -hmm. Literally that's when falls occur. Exactly. And, and it's either in bedrooms or it's in bathrooms yep. because people get tangled. Their feet get tangled up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so the other thing too, is that um, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, when people have experienced trauma, it's, typically things that are environmental. And so we talk about things and we joke about things because these are things that really are going on in our mm -hmm. lives and the lives of others. But you guys, environments can be um, either safe and they can be a place of um, peace or they can be places that can be very harmful, yeah. right? The environment that's up here, that's inside our heads, right? Which is the reason why the word talks so much about transformation of the mind. Yeah. Romans 12, one and um, two really talks a lot about when um, we transform the mind, our feet follow. Mm -hmm. Like literally that says a lot. You guys, our minds can literally trip up our feet. Yeah. Okay. So think about that. Got it. Okay. Got it. So <laughs> um, it really matters um, that 
can the environment be entered safely and exited safely? So I really want you guys to think about that when you're in your home environments, when you're in your work environments, can it be entered and exited safely? And this is also when you think about can emergency and medical services. So when you go into not only your own homes, but the homes of your family members, your friends, mm -hmm. um, can that environment be entered and exited safely? When um, typically when emergency um, or emergent situations or urgent situations occur, people are typically in their bedrooms, yeah. sure. bedrooms and bathrooms, right? Um, hoarding um, situations or situations that um, happen oftentimes are in intimate space, mm -hmm. intimate spaces, which typically end up being bedrooms, bathrooms, and living rooms. Yeah. Right. Because that's where we spend the most of our time. Mm -hmm. Right. In those intimate spaces. But they're also bedrooms and bathrooms are the tightest spaces to maneuver because people tend to put lots of things in those spaces to begin with yeah. because we want to be comfortable in those spaces. Mm -hmm. So there's those big, huge TVs and. Um, you know, people put now people put sofas in their bedrooms yeah, and true. easy chairs because you want to be com just as comfortable in your bedroom as really in well. your living rooms and mm -hmm. your dens and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so when any type of medical emergency or something happens, how is it that people can enter and exit that room to be able to treat you medically if that situation should occur? Yes, so just yes. making sure that this um, we call them traffic patterns. So that means that when you walk into the door of your bedroom and bathroom, that there is a safe way for somebody, if they're needing to lend assistance to you, mm -hmm. can enter and exit that space, right? That also making sure that when you go into your bathroom, that um, if you're older, just start planning for slip resistant mats yeah. in your bathroom, inside the bathtub, having slip resistant mats in there. If you're um, getting to an age where you need grab bars and things like that, if you live by yourself, making sure that you have friends mm -hmm. that know your phone number, um, that have access or keys to your home. We um, experienced that when I was diagnosed with COVID-19. Nobody had keys to my home. I live in an apartment building that you have to have a key fob to enter it. There was nobody who could enter and exit my building to lend me any type of assistance. You know, thankfully we have, you know, DoorDash and CVS and things like okay. that, you know, to be able to um, assist me. But I still, I mean, a sick, you know, was sick, but I had to leave, you know, and enter and exit my apartment being ill mm -hmm. um, to be able to go and get medication yep. and stuff like that. So we think about environmental safety in those aspects as well of making sure that you are able to be healthy and safe. Mm -hmm. So, sis, when is an environment considered unsafe to you? Several um, answers to that question. So, <clears throat> like you have stated, objects just being in the way, mm -hmm. right? Um, I almost had a fall myself, you know, uh, in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. tripping over shoes. And I think it's closed too. So it was literally trip, trip after trip. So that's very un unsafe, mm -hmm. unsafe, unsafe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me and my uns and ins, y'all just work with me. <laughs> uh, then also, um, you know, from previous relationships, people. Yes. Um, within a not healthy, very toxic relationship, right? So that was very unsafe yes. and was not good for me or my children. So that's what I consider, you know, unsafe environments. Yeah. You're going to answer that question as well? Yes, I, I was going to bring that up as well because sometimes we think about bedrooms and bathrooms that we don't state the things that are um, what some might, some people might consider less obvious, which are, you know, um, the relationship environments. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we talked about environmental, M-E-N-T-A-L, is the mental state yeah. um, that people can be in. If people are self-isolating, you guys, if it's placed on your heart and mind, um, someone's name, um, it's for a reason. Exactly. Reach out to people. Um, sometimes a text message is not enough. Um, you know, some, there's been times when somebody's heart, somebody's name has been placed on my heart. I'll look back and see when the last time was that I, I heard from someone, mm -hmm. you know, that I received a text message. And then I will make it a point, you know, at the earliest convenience 
to reach out via phone, mm. you know, and I'll leave a, I'll leave a very pointed message that says, I, I look forward to hearing from you. And if not, I'm going to keep calling you. And I'll say it just like that. Like, <laughs> I'm going to keep calling you. You know, I understand and respect your your um, privacy, but you need to send me a thumbs up or, you know, an emoji or something just to let me know that you're all right. Mm -hmm. Because we care about people. We care about one another, but we need to make sure that people are truly okay, you guys. Yep. I agree with that. Yeah. So, um, yes. Okay. So the next thing is knowing your triggers, your strengths and your limitations, right? Because we've talked about all these different environments, work environment, home environment, um, the cars, a lot of times we kind of play around and say that our cars are our mobile offices. Yes. A lot of times, a lot more business takes place in our cars, especially as women, mm -hmm. than it does in the house. Right. Mm -hmm. We're like en route to another place and making calls. Exactly. Business deals are going down. Yes. Kingdom business is going down. That, that part. Right. That part right there. That you part. guys. <laughs> um, yes. Um, and so, um, sis, have you thought about triggers with regards to environmental triggers, emotional, psychological, physical in those spaces? I really haven't thought, and I never really put a trigger to my personal situation, but, um, but maybe, maybe it's more experience for me. I don't know, but my mm -hmm. situation is more of, I, I think I shared this last week as well. Um, you know, I, I, my husband and I, when we got together, it's always been five children and our, that, you know, we, uh, lived with or that lived with us, I should say. Um, so, um, and it was, uh, when we got together, the home was tiny, teeny, tiny home. Well, so the children could have their space and stay out of my stuff. Everything went into my bedroom. Well, we've been blessed to have a, a larger home, but everything's still going into my bedroom. So it's like, I don't know if you would call it experience or just a bad habit that needs to be broken. I don't know what we call that, but I don't know if it's really, I can't really say it's a trigger, so to speak, or maybe it is a trigger, just it's not a trigger in the mindset that I'm thinking of trigger, being triggered. I don't know. So what's your I, thoughts? I think that excuse me, it's an experience that has caused an environmental response. Mm -hmm. That's you know, exactly what Which I'm triggers thinking. you to not have the motivation mm -hmm. um, to really create um, a therapeutic space. Oh, that's good. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. That totally yeah. makes sense. Okay. Because it's like you get, because you have expressed over and over and over again about I, I I want this space to be like this. I mm -hmm. want this space to be like this. But then you approach that space and you're overwhelmed about being overwhelmed mm -hmm. about that very space that you want to be this beautiful space right. for you and your husband. Yes. And you talk about it a lot. I did. And so that experience that was over here has come and it creates that once again, that isolation because you have this beautiful space, but where our mind is, our feet follow. Exactly. Right. Guess these. Ooh, bless you. <laughs> bless me. you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still see stuff to work on. Yeah. I'm excited about it though. Well, and sometimes I'm excited for you mm -hmm. as well, because I know that one of the major things with these different segments is that it gives a different perspective on where we are. True in the therapeutic process. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes people are like environmental self-care. What does that mean? Like, you know, and then when you start thinking about it, you're like, I had no idea that I needed to grow in that area. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that even related to me. How is that going to relate to me? Mm -hmm. And you're like, that totally relates, relates to, to me. me. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. And then where we need to grow because we are all a work in progress. Mm -hmm. God is always, you know, glowing us up in all these different areas. And when you hear somebody else's experience, mm -hmm. somebody else is going to watch this on the hashtag replay. So if you watch this later, you guys, please um, respond to hashtag replay. Yes. And they're going to go, oh my goodness, that's what's going on with my garage. Yeah. That's what's going on with the extra spare bedroom. Because people just go, oh, that's just a place where I stash things. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's actually not. It's something behind the stashing. Yeah. 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 Or, oh, well, she said that about 
you know, her sterile environment. Girl, your place is always clean. Yeah, but. Mm. What's behind that? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So for me, um, my home, I stated before about my, you know, past trauma. And, you know, you guys, we walk in our healing. We claim our healing because mm -hmm. we know that although these might be facts, as our pastor says, we know that the truth is a person. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do that. But in our flesh and our humanity, you guys, we continue to move towards greater peace in these areas, which moves us towards um, continued healing, yes. right? So we let go, we lay at the cross because some things we just simply don't know, right? Mm -hmm. Some things we're like, oh gosh, well, that's another peeling on the onion that's been mm -hmm. praise God for healing because healing is peeling and peeling is healing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we do is we just continue to peel back the layers and we um, just continually um, confess our sins. Like, Lord, we did not even know that. So right. praise God for the covering of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, for me, one of my major triggers used to be the bathroom. Um, I had experienced um, sexual abuse at the hands of my father mm -hmm. in the space of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And so my bathroom is always pristine clean mm -hmm. because it was a space where I thought that um, unpure things had happened, which is why my, my environment tends to be really, really, really clean because I'm like, oh, I don't want anything bad to happen in this environment again. Right. And so things that are on shelves and things that are clean and I always want it to smell a certain way because for me, the tri it triggers. There used to be things that would be a trigger in certain rooms in my home. Mm -hmm. And so I know that will resonate also with individuals who have experienced trauma at the hands of a parent, yeah. right? And so sometimes it's not just about, well, your house always smells like bleach or your house is always super clean. Things mean different things, you guys. Yeah. And now, praise God, I've been delivered from obsessive compulsive disorder and, you know, things where I've, I used to have to I would vacuum for hours to make sure that the, the lines in the carpet, that you could see them, you know, yeah. um, and things like that. Like I've always wanted it to, you know, smell like bleach in my home. So I would just buy like I mean, I used to have like six, seven, eight gallons of bleach in my home at all times. Wow. Just to make sure that it smelled like bleach in my home um, because I wanted to make sure that it, things smelled pure mm. in my home. You know, praise God. It smells like chicken every time. Every time you walk in my house, it's, it never, smells like chicken. It never smells like bleach when I come over here. So. It smells like chicken or like um, sesame gen sesame oil in my house, like legitimately, like every time I walk That's in my what house. she cooks. Cause that's why I cook with you guys. I'm milk her all the time. And then God made chicken before he made Adam and Eve. Just so you guys know. Yes. Um, so those are my triggers. <laughs> um, used to be now, now they're not, now I'm good. You know, praise God praise and God. getting better, you know, every single day. Every day. Um, so the, um, we talked about that. And then the last thing that I wanted to really share with you guys, um, that we want to share is cheer for yourself. Every win counts. Yes, it does. I love this part. Yeah. Every win right. counts, you guys. And yes. I'm literally in here cheering. Like, I'm glad there's no cameras in here because it's crazy. I may have to install one. Wouldn't that be great for us to see Amber cheering just because? <laughs> no, because I did like a whole, like, I mean, it was really, it was good the other day. Like, it was, I <laughs> like did a whole thing. Like, it was like pep squad, like back in the day. I'm like class of 93, like back in the day, day. It was great. Yeah. Um, so some helpful hints, and then we're going to go ahead and let you guys get on with your evening. Um, some helpful hints are playing music, you know, because the thing is, is that when you're keeping your environment safe mm -hmm. and you're keeping it clean and you're maintaining, as you know, you're doing all these wonderful things and putting these practices in place, mm -hmm. it will become habitual, right? You, you'll start doing it and it'll, it's just second nature, mm -hmm. like literally. I do it all the time, you guys. Sure. Um, and it becomes fun. Like, I, I love cleaning, though. Cleaning is fun to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. It might, you guys, I'm not going to lie. It may not become fun ever, but it will become something that will make you feel better in your environment. That part. Okay. That's what we're going um, for. And then there's some people that are just quirky like me. You're extraordinary like me. And you're like, girl, it is fun, right? Um, is that you'll play music. I like my 90s jams because I, I know the words. 80s, 90s for me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, a favorite movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know the words. 
And you kind of know what the movie's already about. Yeah. So you're just like... You're not getting distracted. Yeah, you could just kind of let it be the background Stay on task. And continue to do what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then every now and then you kind of look up yourself. Or you're doing like this because it's your favorite, favorite it's part. It's your favorite, favorite. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, I love that part. Right, or your favorite TV program. Mm -hmm. You know, like the old school TV program. So you're, once again, you're not distracted because you don't necessarily want to go sit down unless you're doing like if you're folding laundry. And yeah, like the that. folding on laundry is a good. Yeah, I think the TV for me is when I'm doing laundry. I'm either go ahead with your next one because I was about to say it. Yeah. Or talking on the phone to her. Yeah, she's talking on the phone with me because mm -hmm. that's your, your lifeline or your checkmate where mm -hmm. they just help you stay on track because a lot of times we're both doing laundry mm -hmm. or I'm simultaneously doing laundry and meal prepping at the mm -hmm. same time. Yep. Yeah. Because I'll meal prep several things at a time, like on a Saturday or Sunday. Yep. And then she's like, sis, I'm doing laundry too. Da, da, da. Yeah. Because she has multiple family members or she's doing, you know, she and her husband's, husband's you know, and so they've got a lot going on. And everything, and so we'll stay on the phone, and yeah, you know, and then you're like, Oh my gosh, like I'm done, done. Yeah, I put it away. Like, I never, put yeah, it she away. always is like, Sis, it's like folded and put away, yeah, yeah it's like, crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, or like, I love listening to old sermons, mm -hmm. yeah. like, I'll put on stuff like that. I love that, yeah, yeah. there's always like a lot of good stuff on but you YouTube. Could, you could get a really good word while you are mm -hmm. working, right? So, yeah, yeah, I like that, too. love that, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Um, there was one other thing that I was going to share and I totally forgot like what it was. It was kind of like on the tip of my tongue. Darn. It might come to me. Okay. Anyways. So those are our um, helpful hints, tips, tricks. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I know what it was. Okay. So when you're cheering for yourself, um, have a reward. That was it. Oh, reward good. yourself. Um, so I know we love like Starbucks coffee, mm -hmm. you know, but um, make sure that you really, um, not just cheer for yourself because everyone counts, but, you know, if you're like really tackling something really, you know, even if it's something little like the other day um, I, in my apartment building across the street, there's coffee in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'll walk across the street and get myself a coffee. So, um, you know, getting my exercise in. Um, which is really good. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's people over there that I love, you know, I'm a social butterfly. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So the um, office will be open over there and I can go and get my, I take my coffee cup over there and I'm like, hey guys. And just, and I get fresh air because I'm walking across the street. Mm -hmm. So I get out of my apartment, um, which helps me for my environmental self-care, my mental M-E-N-T-A-L self-care. I'm getting vitamin D. Yep. I'm not isolating nope. because sometimes that can be a thing that I'm like, girl, you came home on Friday and you never left your apartment the whole weekend. The whole weekend. Yeah. And so for me, that's not a good thing. No. So I want to make sure that I get out. And so oftentimes that's like my goal. I'm like, when I'm done with my cleaning, I, I like put my cup, my big, I have a big giant coffee mug that I'll put out on my counter. And it's a reminder of like, this is the goal. This is the end goal. Mm -hmm. Like this is the touchdown. Go get the coffee. After Go the get the coffee. Mm -hmm. And then you get to socialize. Um, I usually do like strip down Saturdays or Sundays where I don't do makeup when mm -hmm. I go live. But I'm like, girl, you can put some lip gloss on, put your cute sunglasses on, and you're going to cross the street. That part. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll come back and do, you know, self-care, maybe mm -hmm. take a bath, do my mm -hmm. nails or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So have, have an end game in mind. I love that. Yeah. Yes. A reward system. Yeah. 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 That was awesome. Sir. Great. Thank you. Love it. I love this. Segment. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody felt like really blessed by um, this segment because um, I, I just really love just making sure that we're pouring into you guys as usual. Please reach out to us mm -hmm. if we can support you um, even further in this space. Yes, or if you go, oh my gosh, I need more information mm -hmm. about that. I need more resources. Um, then just reach out to us. We do have our soaring into my love story at gmail.com um, email available. You can always reach out to us in that space um, mm -hmm. and we will most definitely get back to you. We mean. love hearing from all of our audience members. We um, we're just so humbled and blessed that God allows us to be used in this space. Um, so praise God for all of you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. We are so, so grateful for y'all. So yeah, as Amber said, go ahead and hit us up at the, what's down there? 
Soaring yeah. into my love story at gmail.com. We do respond. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. And I guess until next week. Yes, until next week, because we are um, we are going to be talking um, a little bit about um, transitions mm -hmm. in the environment. Sounds exciting. Yes. Um, and then our next um, segment is going to be about spiritual self-care. And I'm just like really super excited about that. Uh, yes, yes. So it's it's crazy. We're almost kind of bringing environmental self-care to a close. Yeah. After next week, right? Yeah. It'll be. Well, we have. Well, next week. Then the next week. Up. And then we'll have the wrap up. Yeah. Oh, wow. That yes. I know that one went fast. I really enjoyed environmental self-care. Environment Because it's different. It is. And we don't think about that as being part of self-care, yeah. right? So it, it, it was really, really inspiring. Yeah. Informative for me. Got a lot of action items. A lot, a whole lot. I love it. So, <laughs> so y'all, like I said, if you're in that same boat with me, um, that you do need to take care of your environment a little bit better, let me know. Let's work this thing out together because um, we, we all need to start somewhere. Let's partner up. So is that it? Yeah, that is it. So we always like to leave you guys with um, our foundational scripture um, for um, Talk About It Tuesday and for our combined um, coaching uh, model together soaring. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus replied to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry. And the one who believes in me as savior will never be thirsty. For that one will be sustained spiritually. And that comes from John 6, 35 in the Amplified Version of the Bible. There is a direct correlation between health and spiritual growth. Yes. So we thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much for taking time out to just really, really, really just dig in and receive what God already had yes. for you. So thank you guys so much. See you next week. See you next week. Bye, everybody.